Привет. I'm inspired that there's so many people working to accomplish the same goal of creating a connected future. By having students lead clubs on campus directly supported by Google developers, that's the best way to reach out to students. It's really inspirational always to hear about members of the community who echo your values and echo your beliefs. I've been listening more than I've been speaking and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because I'm, I'm just getting all these ideas. Google, it needs to reach a wider audience and be more relatable as a company and I think Google is one of the brands that is very good at doing that. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your morning, afternoon, evening to be here with us. We hope that you're safe and healthy during these uncertain times. My name is Stephanie Lopez. I'm a former DSC lead and now Developer Student Club student advisor from the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. I hope you're as excited as I am for this event. Today, my wonderful colleague Mehmet, who is the DSC lead for Lambton College, will be here to show you how to maximize your online presence using LinkedIn. Mehmet, take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, for, uh, thank you uh, Stephanie. I'm Mehmet, the DSC lead, as well as LinkedIn Learning Ambassador at Lambton College in Toronto. Thank you for joining us today. We have a uh, great stuff to talk about uh, LinkedIn and LinkedIn learning. Uh, please let us know in the YouTube chat uh, where you guys are tuning in from. We would love to hear from you uh, guys. Uh, let's kick off the session then. Here is our uh, agenda. We are going to uh, start with a LinkedIn, then uh, get into uh, your LinkedIn profile. Uh, we are going to rock your LinkedIn profiles and uh, I'll be uh, walking you through how you can optimize your LinkedIn profiles and as well as giving some uh, tricks to stand out your LinkedIn profiles. Then uh, LinkedIn Learning, which is a free um, online education platform. Uh, at the end of our session, we'll be getting your questions uh, through YouTube chat, uh, and I'll be answering all of them. Uh, let's get started. The world of work is changing, and we all face a competitive and uh, complex business environment nowadays. Competition, uh, competition is uh, like really high, expectations going up, and uh, disruption technology is disrupting uh, the entire uh, industries and the traditional career path. Many companies expect us to uh, keep up with emerging technologies and uh, get certified in some field. The business environment may be compelling on some level, level to get into, into. In this point, networking becomes more important and uh, they're very linked and help us. Here's their uh, mission. Connect the world's professional to make them more productive and successful. What LinkedIn can do for you? They can connect you to, to you to a professional world, stay informed through professional and industry news uh, because uh, like through LinkedIn, you can follow like your the companies you uh, admire of or uh, you can like stay informed and get hired. And uh, that's uh, something we all want, right? Uh, and then like build our uh, career uh, on this great platform. Uh, I wanna talk about the power of LinkedIn and uh, just wanna point out how powerful they are. They have uh, 640 million members, uh, 30 million companies, and 90,000 schools on their platform. Uh, so huge, right? Let's see like, how you can optimize your profile. This part, uh, the uh, part I love most because uh, we are going to rock your LinkedIn profiles and uh, be talking about how you can optimize your LinkedIn profile. As you can see here, the first thing you should do is adding a photo. 
but uh, it's not just photo, it's a professional photo. I've been doing uh, my LinkedIn uh, workshops uh, for almost a year. And uh, what I uh, noticed is like some of students don't use a proper, uh, proper photo for their profiles. Some of them uh, don't use anything, that ju it's just empty or some of them use like selfies and it's not a proper photo for LinkedIn because as you may know, LinkedIn is a professional network. So we should use uh, like something professional. And what I mean by, na uh, by that is uh, you should be alone from shoulders up, natural background, and professional clothing. And uh, did you know profiles with a photo get 21 uh, times more profile views? That is true. And summary of your profile is another important thing for your profile because that's the place you can market yourself on LinkedIn. You have a space uh, you can show off yourself and uh, make your personal branding uh, you can uh, put your ele uh, elevator pitch and you can mention about your accomplishments projects and some of your like highlight features uh, just uh, one thing uh, you should keep it short you shouldn't put like everything here you shouldn't like put like a story because you know uh, like some of things uh, you can provide here are already on profile linkedin has work experience part education part which we are going to talk uh, in a minute and uh, just don't put everything keep it simple and keep it short and it's recommended by linkedin uh, it's like you should uh, keep like a uh, hundred words Add your education. We have uh, a background uh, in education, so we can put our like bachelors, if you have any masters, PhDs, put it over there and show uh, your education, education background. Uh, let's say you have a, a high GPA, you, uh, show it here. Uh, put your GPA and take uh, some attention uh, from recruiters. Uh, if you have uh, like any thesis from your masters or if you did any final project during your post graduation or uh, like bachelor's, put it over there. Uh, like I graduated uh, from Bashkent University and I have done a 3D game simulator. Uh, for instance, I put my final project on my fine, uh, my LinkedIn profile just to show what I've done uh, during my um, education because you know education is just a degree. If you uh, put some details on your profile, uh, you can get like more views uh, for your LinkedIn profile, and that's uh, what we want, right? And then. Adding your work experience um, is also important because uh, this is the one thing uh, when someone comes to your profile, they usually check this part of your profile. And profiles uh, with work experience are 10 times more likely to get message. But what you shouldn't do here is you shouldn't put just title. You should uh, explain and summarize your work experience during uh, a project uh, or like uh, anything you've done uh, during that work experience. And you can also put like some uh, pictures or your uh, team pictures or like any reward certification you may get from your uh, work experience, put it over there, show yourself. Like I told you, LinkedIn is a place uh, when you can uh, market yourself. And then, you can also add voluntary experience. If you have any, it's good to have on LinkedIn profile as well, right? Put uh, like everything you have on your LinkedIn profile. And we have other things as well here. Uh, LinkedIn have like plenty of uh, things to put your profile, such as courses, honors, awards, publications, organizations, languages. If you uh, know more than like two languages, put it over there uh, because uh, some um, positions on LinkedIn also require some languages. Let's talk about in Canada, like in some positions, uh, you may need French to apply to. Uh, put your French into your uh, profile if you know already. And if you have like any organization you get into, uh, put it over there. It's also good to uh, have on your profile. And 
adding um, your skills. This is actually what I love most about uh, my profile because it definitely help us, helps us uh, to find and get into our uh, dream jobs. Because LinkedIn basically sells their product, which is uh, like for companies. Uh, and uh, while we are looking for uh, like our uh, jobs, dream jobs, companies are also looking for their best candidates for their jobs. So uh, put your uh, skills on your profile let's say uh, you're a java developer put java or uh, like anything related to that position let's say you're like uh, you, like program manager and you may need leadership public speaking journalism this kind of stuff put it uh, over there and then uh, this is going to uh, get matched with uh, jobs on LinkedIn and then you may get a uh, referred to uh, like a job on LinkedIn and you can get a job like through LinkedIn that's how it works and everything on LinkedIn uh, it's basically uh, works based on keywords whatever you put on your LinkedIn profile you are gonna get match uh, and then uh, you may get uh, land your dream job through LinkedIn and I'm going to uh, like uh, demonstrate how you can uh, get job and actually how does your profile get analyzed. Uh, this is basically premium insights and this insight according to my profile. And uh, this is a software developer position from RBC. And as you can see here, uh, current role, I got five out of five. And uh, in skills part, I got five out of five and it's Past, past experience, I got four out of five. And if you see the top skills, and uh, this skills uh, comes from uh, come from my LinkedIn profile, like uh, Java, C++, leadership, and SQL. And what uh, I didn't put was like JavaScript, Python, HTML, and actually uh, because I don't have any uh, web. Uh, background so I didn't put them uh, over there but uh, as you can see still I'm pretty good because I'm in the top 10 percent of almost 2,000 um, candidates on LinkedIn this is a huge difference can you imagine if you put 10, 10 of top skills what I would be in this uh, ranking that would be great right so I'm not promoting LinkedIn Premium here. What I'm telling you is, if you uh, optimize your LinkedIn profile according to what I have told you, uh, you can also uh, you can be also in that ten, uh, ten percent on five percent. I'm not sure if there's a uh, like five percent showing to uh, Premium members, but that's how it works. So. Uh, just uh, give some time and work on your profile. And what I can recommend to you, uh, I sometimes do actually, I uh, sometimes uh, look up some people that I wanna be in the future. I uh, I, I look for like some uh, people in Google, AWS or some good companies and select some people uh, where they, uh, they are uh, in the future where I wanna be. So uh, go to your profiles and what uh, see what they have done so far, how their LinkedIn profile are, you know, uh, like how, how they optimize their LinkedIn profile. Some of them um, uh, like don't really optimize their LinkedIn profile. They're like sometimes simple, but uh, some of them are really strong on LinkedIn. They are, they are actively using LinkedIn. So like if you uh, use LinkedIn actively and post, recommend, like some comments, you can get attention from recruiters because that's how uh, it works. You know, I, I had almost mm, three or 400 uh, connections on, that, uh, on LinkedIn, but Almost a year, I arrived uh, after I arrived uh, Canada. I I made amazing connections through LinkedIn, and actually that helped me uh, to build my career and my connections in Canada. Uh, because you know, if you, uh, I believe like uh, some of you guys from uh, like US and uh, Canada or maybe around uh, other sites of the world. So, you know, when you go like uh, in a different company, uh, um, country, uh, it's hard to like network, like meet people, but LinkedIn help us uh, this easier, 
really just a need uh, you need to give like some time and build your uh, professional network on that uh, on linkedin let's uh, look at linkedin learning like i told you linkedin learning is the uh, online platform online education platform uh, where you can build your uh, skill set and you can also improve your uh, background your ex uh, everything uh, you want to do in the future uh, let's check in uh, check out most in the uh, demand soft skills uh, 2019 they are like creativity uh, person co collaboration adaptability time management and let's see hard skills uh, i will leave some of uh, you guys into uh, it stuff as well and you may interest in this stuff and Cloud computing, artificial intelligence, analytical reasoning, and people management, uh, management UX design. Uh, like this is just some of them. Uh, this list is just uh, a short list, but you can uh, look up uh, on LinkedIn Learning, and uh, you can actually find uh, something uh, that work for uh, for works for you. And equip yourself uh, with the most in demand skills with LinkedIn Learning. Build on existing skill and uh, learn something new with uh, like many courses. Uh, like this presentation from last year, and that's why here it says uh, there are uh, 14,000 courses on uh, LinkedIn, but I believe now it's almost 20,000 uh, or more than 20,000 courses on business leadership, creative and technology. You can uh, find like lots of stuff over there. And what um, uh, what I can tell you is this platform is free uh, for many universities and colleges in uh, North America and Canada. I mean North America in general. Uh, just all you need to do is go uh, go Google and uh, look for look up LinkedIn Learning and your college. If they uh, if they have any partnership, uh, you'll find it. But we'll also, uh, I'm also gonna show you how you can uh, sign and log in your uh, LinkedIn Learning account today. All you need to do is uh, go linkedin.com slash learning, and then uh, you need to click on a uh, sign in button. If you use your college credentials, you will be able to uh, make use of your LinkedIn Learning for free. Uh, LinkedIn and LinkedIn Learning, are two different platforms. Yes, they are associated, uh, associated, but you should use your college credentials to um, sign up and sign in your LinkedIn Learning account. If you use your personal LinkedIn account, uh, you have to pay uh, for it uh, like monthly basis. So it's uh, it's good to use your uh, like college credentials, and then you can actually associate with your personal LinkedIn account as well. And we have a video here. I'm going to start. Let's see. I've become aware of others' preferred languages to build connections and adapt in this day and age. The Course Communication Foundations has helped me connect so much better with my colleagues and has improved the way that people view me. I've become aware of others' preferred languages to build connections and adapt in this day and age. Of course, communication a lot of fun. It's helped me connect so much better with my colleagues. Sorry, guys. Uh, and I continually apply what I've learned. Learn. Sorry, guys, for the technical issue. I had like some problem here. But I'm hoping yeah, you're all good. So let's continue. So let's talk about a bit about uh, LinkedIn Learning. Uh, like, as, like I told you earlier, like you can find lots of course over there and you can create your own list. Uh, what I usually do is 
you can uh, you can go your LinkedIn account. You can save some of cur some course on LinkedIn and then save those course to watch later. Uh, for example, we have some like Google Flutter or like Firebase uh, courses over there. I sometimes go and select some courses to watch later. I have like some bucket list uh, to uh, for, like finish uh, like before looking for like my next job and opportunity. So you can also do the same thing. And uh, learning paths uh, are also great, a uh, great way to leverage your skills. And uh, you can like take a, a great learning path on LinkedIn learning, such as become, become an Android developer or become a program manager or become a recruiter uh, or human resource specialist. Like we have like, uh, like many courses over there, many learning paths. Uh, go and look for your title you want to be in the future. Uh, and then I believe you'll find a, a great learning path, especially for IT techs or uh, like anything you can get over there. And get in search file on LinkedIn. Um, sorry, guys. I think I'm hoping I, you are he hearing me well now. Uh, I think I had some problem with that. Let's uh, let me continue. Sorry, uh, sorry about that. Getting certified on LinkedIn Learning is another thing you can uh, take advantage of. Uh, LinkedIn actually provides uh, provides you a certification. It, once you have done any courses on LinkedIn, uh, you can get certified and put on uh, your uh, like resume as well as on LinkedIn profile. Uh, certifications uh, are valuable and reflection of your knowledge. And you know, it's uh, it's better to say, um, you know, uh, I have this certification from LinkedIn Learning rather than uh, just talking about uh, your skills. Uh, for example, I've done uh, like learning Python and uh, like blockchain. And also I have uh, done some projects about that. And uh, like you can put like your projects as well as your certifications on your profile as well as your resume. And and then share your success on LinkedIn. Like we can share like our stories, our like certifications. Once you finish your course, all skills on the course can be transferred to your LinkedIn profile. Uh, remember, I mentioned that like skills are quite important for like for you to get into your like dream job through LinkedIn. Once you uh, done a like cur course like uh, through LinkedIn, uh, like those skills on that course um, transferred to your profile. And uh, that, that makes you uh, like much closer to your dream job. And uh, I will recommend you something here, set a weekly goal. Uh, I'm a kind of person uh, who, some, who sometimes needs uh, uh, get motivated and push, you know, to uh, work sometimes because uh, we all need some motivation. And this tool, uh, this feature of LinkedIn Learning uh, helps you out, um, like motivate yourself and you can set a goal, uh, a weekly goal. Uh, I set mine, I guess, like 60 minutes a week. So it's, it's first, uh, pretty good, actually. Uh, and then just take action. Learning is everywhere with offline mode and uh, the online courses you uh, you like and reach them without an internet connection. Uh, if you go on a vacation or if you are on like travel, uh, you can download all your uh, courses and then you can like watch them offline without any internet connection. That's also another good thing uh, like to take uh, advantage of. And I'm going to recommend some courses for soft skills. Like e even though you may be in the uh, IT uh, side, we still need so uh, we, we still need soft skills. So I can recommend uh, like this course, like uh, critical thinking, strategic planning, learn emotional intelligence. You can take a screenshot of uh, this. I believe I also shared like these recommended courses on my LinkedIn profile. If you go to my LinkedIn profile, you can directly uh, see uh, these links as well. But also you can uh, look it up uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, 
And there are also recommended courses for hard skills. Uh, and for our community, if you are uh, willing to learn Google Flutter, yeah, we have a, a like learning path for it. And if you want to uh, become an Android mobile app developer, we, all, we also have a, a learning path for it. Just go and look it up, whatever you want. Uh, like there are many like courses related to data analytics, Tableau, or like cloud computing. Like uh, you know, cloud is um, getting so popular nowadays, and you can like every jobs actually every job actually related to cloud as well you can um, like get some course and then get certified and put your profile too uh, i definitely recommend you go uh, through and check these recommended courses on linkedin learning and let me show you uh how you can uh, like find others around you. Uh, there, there are two different features uh, on your LinkedIn application. If you have already built a LinkedIn application, you can also see uh, if you go here, your application, uh, and then click on my network. And if you click the, that sign you see here, you'll see that uh, there are like two different buttons. One of them scan code and another them find nearby. Since uh, we are uh, all on like virtual platform because of COVID, it's hard to uh, go any like some, uh, some meet or like meetings. And then actually if you go like any like uh, summit in the future, if we go through like this challenging phase, uh, you can use like find nearby feature and this helps, uh, helps you uh, find people around you, which is really great. If you open uh, this feature and, and others open also, uh, you can like find each other through LinkedIn app. And also there are like scan QR code. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my QR code here and we can get connect on LinkedIn as well. Uh, and that's uh, what, my LinkedIn workshop was. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to ask. We, uh, uh, we would love to uh, hear from you all, guys. And also, please uh, let us know uh, where you guys are from and let's uh, talk about a bit uh, LinkedIn and LinkedIn learning. Yes, we have a question here. I have a question. How does uh, LinkedIn Learning pair up against other learning resources? That's a quite good question. Uh, there, yes, there are like um, some uh, online education platforms such as Udemy or Coursera. Every like every platform has the, like different features. But what I uh, believe is LinkedIn has plenty of uh, sources, really, there are a lot. And it's also free for students in North America. Uh, I'm from uh, Lamping College and uh, I don't pay anything for it. But if you go like Coursera or like Udemy, you have to pay uh, like something uh, like monthly. So we don't have to pay anything for it. That's uh, one thing uh, you can go for LinkedIn. And what is the best way to increase connections? Stephanie, hey. Hey, Mehmet. Thank you for the awesome presentation. I learned a lot, and I hope everyone else did as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like we have another question. What's the best way to increase connections on LinkedIn? Yes. The best way to increase connections, uh, doing posts, preparing some posts, sharing posts. But like some of us um, are like, like, like we tend to we we don't tend to share uh, like our, our posts or we are kind of uh, you know shy to post our uh, stuff because uh, we are afraid of getting likes or we are like afraid of uh, like other people's um, think uh, you know thoughts but we shouldn't be uh, what how you can uh, increase your connection is you can also like and comment others uh, like posts. For example, um, let's say like Google Developer Student Club, we have like plenty of uh, LinkedIn pages. You can go over there and uh, leave some comments and that's how we can also, there are lots of uh, events on LinkedIn. Uh, you can also attend some of them and uh, meet different people around the world, around the North America.
Great. It looks like we have another question. So someone asked, how does LinkedIn learning pair up against other online learning resources? And I know you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but if you could elaborate on this, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, like I told you, uh, like LinkedIn is like free uh, in North America, like for many universities. So if you go to your uh, university page or LinkedIn learning page, you can find it out if, uh, if they have any partnership with LinkedIn learning. Uh, that's the best thing actually you can go with uh, LinkedIn Learning because you don't have to pay anything and there are many plenty courses on their platform so I think uh, it's obviously the best one. Awesome. So someone asks, who are the best people to make connections with? Should I connect only with people I know or with strangers who we don't know yet? It, it really depends. Some of people uh, say like we shouldn't um, like keep networking with people we don't know, but I don't believe really because how we are gonna like meet different people. When I come to Canada, when I came to Canada, I didn't know anyone, but uh, like with LinkedIn, thanks to LinkedIn, actually, I uh, made great connections. And uh, like through LinkedIn, you can like find like different uh, like people around the world around like Canada or North America. Uh, I, I believe like you should connect everyone you can. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying just go and click on like follow or send any in uh, invitation, uh, but you can follow their posts and you can find like different opportunities out there because there are many different uh, opportunities uh, we are not aware of. So thanks to uh, connections uh, through LinkedIn, we can get them and um, we may uh, land our dream job, maybe, who knows? Someone asked, I'm changing careers and I have 10 years of experience, but none are technology related. Should I put these years of experience on LinkedIn? I mean, it really depends, but um, I think like every, any experience is like uh like any experience should be on your profile because experience uh like i think is experience anyway so you can put over there uh 10 years is not uh, like i mean it's something really big uh but it's like i told you it's it's totally depends it can change yeah and to add to what mehmet said i think there are a lot of skills that aren't exactly technically related but are still applicable to the tech industry and so someone in the comments said that they had retail experience and retail experience includes negotiation and customer service and communication skills. And all of these skills are really, really valuable to the tech industry and any industry, really. So I would encourage you to put those skills on your LinkedIn because those are very valuable. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree with that, Stephanie. So someone asks, should we sign up on LinkedIn with our school emails or our personal emails? Definitely uh, with your school emails because that's how you are gonna get uh, like free LinkedIn learning. If you use your personal uh, LinkedIn uh, account, you cannot take advantage of LinkedIn learning for free. Uh, use your college credit, college or university credentials uh, to make use of LinkedIn learning for free. Awesome. The next question is, people's profile often have a tag of first, second, and third. What does that mean alongside a recruiter's profile? Uh, it's it's totally, uh, it's all about your uh, connections. For, uh, if you are uh, like first, uh, if you see first one, uh, it means uh, you know uh, like that person, the closest, from your closest, uh, connection it's all about your connections if you see second and third actually i'm not expert of that so i cannot tell something uh, exactly why it is but it's something related to uh, how close you are to that person yeah it's exactly a degree of separation wonderful the next question is, is a profile picture important to increase profile presence? Exactly. Uh, that's why actually I mentioned about that uh, in uh, my first 
um, slide in the um, part of LinkedIn profile, uh, your LinkedIn profile, uh, you should use something uh, like professional, like professional clothing and like shoulders up, you should be alone. And I sometimes see some people uh, use like selfies, you know, this is not Instagram or uh, Twitter. So we should use like something uh, professional, like headshots. That's how, what you can use for a LinkedIn photo. Excellent. Uh, another question is, what are some things we can do to stand out when reaching out to recruiters on LinkedIn? Uh, what you can do is you can follow uh, like recruiters because some of uh, like some of them don't want to uh, connect with everyone. For example, I'm looking for a cop right now, and I'm uh, like in touch with some recruiters on LinkedIn, and some of them really don't want to like connect with lots of citizens. But you can uh, follow their like posts just to see uh, is there any uh, you know job uh, uh, process going on uh like you can actually uh, go and check their you know uh like post on linkedin and how you can stand out is uh you should optimize your linkedin profile like i told you uh, earlier uh, on like my slides you should go uh, on someone profile and see uh, like someone who want to be in the future, uh, I mean, um, in terms of career. So uh, go to your profile and see how they optimize their LinkedIn and then optimize your LinkedIn according to that. So uh, if they mention uh, like something on, on the skills part, put similar uh, skills on uh, your skills part too. Like if you have, uh, of course, uh, but according to that, uh, optimize uh, according to that please optimize your profile then you will be definitely stand out when reaching out to recruiters wonderful and uh, someone asked can we ask for referrals on linkedin if so how would you go about that process yes why not but it's uh if you know someone if you uh, met someone through linkedin yes you can why not but uh, you shouldn't uh, ask for referrals directly you should build a relationship uh, over linkedin uh, if you go someone without knowing or just messaging can you uh, please help me with like this position i want to be like in this company you know no one uh, likes that no one uh, like because like many recruiters or many people get lots of emails or in mails so you should um, build a, like strong uh, relationships because linkedin is not uh, a place for referrals uh, referrals. Uh, LinkedIn is a place where you can uh, make your connections and connections uh, is going to get to uh, great opportunities. That's how you can uh, get referrals actually. Wonderful. Someone asks, what happens to our LinkedIn learning when we finish school? As long as uh, your university or college um, has a partnership with LinkedIn Learning, uh, you are able to, you'll be able to uh, connect LinkedIn Learning and you can use uh, as long as they have a partnership with LinkedIn Learning. I double check with my uh, like college. Um, there is no problem, like there's no problem with that. Great. So Alina asks, if we've already made a LinkedIn account with our personal email, should we make another one using our school email? Uh, actually, actually, LinkedIn, uh, like you can use your LinkedIn account your, with your personal email. What you should, your uh, where you should, your like college email is, uh, is definitely uh, your LinkedIn learning account because when you go to LinkedIn learning account, uh, you should use your LinkedIn, uh, your college credentials to uh, use the uh, platform for free. If you use your LinkedIn uh, like account uh, email, so it's not gonna work. You have to, you are gonna have to uh, pay for it. 
like I told you, uh, two platforms are uh, totally uh, different. Yes, they are connected, but uh, once you uh, go your LinkedIn account, you can definitely use your personal email. It doesn't matter. You can also use your college email too. It tot totally depends on you, whatever you want. Great. Uh, next question. What's the typical process of trying to connect to a recruiter or someone you find interesting on LinkedIn? Okay. Um, yeah, that, that, that's uh, totally okay. You can, if you, uh, yeah, I've done, I've done before, uh, especially um, like I ask some of people I've worked before uh, to get some recommendation. Actually, one of them actually told me that, Mehmet, uh, I want to give you a recommendation on LinkedIn. I said, why not? Like, uh, recommendations are always welcome. So uh, you can always ask uh, recommendations, like, for your profile. Uh, like, But for that, you have to have a you know, professional uh, background uh, with that person uh, to get a recommendation because like from your friends, uh, like someone from uh, someone who doesn't know you in a professional environment, in, you know, it doesn't make sense, but why not? Great, and uh, the next question asks, how can you ta tailor your headline and summary to receive the most attention and or exposure to others such as recruiters? Um, uh, I think you should put uh, something that uh, describes you best. Mm, so it really depends on uh, what title you are in, uh, but like it totally depends. But you should uh, use something definitely describe you best. That that's how you can uh, like market yourself. Great. The next question: Do recommendations and endorsements really make you stand out as an applicant? Yeah, I definitely do. Well, like you should um, get endorsed uh, in some uh, skills. That's also something you are gonna uh, like. It's uh, uh, this is definitely something. It's gonna help you uh, landing your like next job because it's going to uh, like help LinkedIn. Uh, you uh, get match like uh, with other uh, jobs on the LinkedIn. So you should definitely uh, get some recommendation, endorsements, and they, uh, they are definitely uh, going to make you stand out on LinkedIn. Great. Well, it doesn't look like there are any more questions. I have my own question, though, just in case anyone wants to put yeah. the last one in. Um, so as a last nugget of wisdom, what would you recommend that students do aside from having an elevator pitch and having endorsements and having recommendations? Uh, what is your golden nugget of wisdom for people uh, to maximize their online presence on LinkedIn? I think we should definitely pull up lots of uh, people and companies we want to uh, get involved in the future. For example, I like uh, follow Google, Microsoft, AWS. They are also have lots of uh, opportunities. If you like, you can get involved like um, like different uh, opportunities over there. It's not just about uh, getting into a job. For example, uh, I found out a BSc uh, lead opportunity through LinkedIn. I had a LinkedIn Learning Ambassador colleague uh, on LinkedIn uh, who is from uh, like Chicago. And then I checked uh, his profile, what he uh, has done. Uh, during uh, his BSc lead uh, experience and leadership, and that made me uh, really, uh, really want to be a BSc lead for my uh, college. So there are like many opportunities out there if you follow like uh, like companies and uh, you know like clubs, communities. There are also like many communities you can follow on uh, this platform, and that's how you can like build your personal branding and uh this is uh, like uh, like something we really want right 
Awesome. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot more questions. Uh, so someone asks, where, who exactly can we get endorsements from? Okay, uh, this is a great question. And um, what I can tell you is like for this question is, you can ask your like colleagues at college, university, and you can get like from your first professors as well. If you have, uh, if you have done uh, like any like work experience, you can ask your, uh, you know, like colleagues, from like that work experience as well. Uh, like any, like it can be uh, from anyone, like from your social platforms. Wonderful. The next question asks, are there things on our profile that we should keep visible only to connections? I, I, I'm actually, um, my profile is totally open to everyone so uh too visible only to connections so i can recommend you uh keep everything uh, open everyone because this platform is uh helping you find your uh like next opportunity don't uh in don't do any invisible things open everything all connections i think I, that's i uh, that's what i can tell you Wonderful. Someone asks, is it a good way to mention searching for an internship on the header section? Um, it, it really depends, but I believe uh, it can help. You know, uh, no one knows how you can get uh, your next opportunity through LinkedIn. Uh, like if you put uh, like something you are looking for, like internship, I think it, this can totally work. Yeah, why not? I think you should do that. I, I and also uh, LinkedIn has uh, a new thing which is called Open to uh, Work. You can also put uh, that feature on your profile, and then you can get a green uh, like tin on your profile. So that can also work uh, to get into a, your next opportunity. Great. Uh, Paul asks, what is your advice on including a two-line professional summary on your resume? I've been told by some recruiters to do this, but by others that it's just more for them to read. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Let me think. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, actually not that expert on like resume uh, like or, or that kind of stuff but I think uh, I mean like this stuff or uh, like all depends you know uh, but I think like two line professional summary on your resume yeah it can be like much more than that but uh, totally up to you yeah, I'll add to that. Uh, so I'm actually hosting a resume workshop tomorrow if you want to learn more about that. But if you do have a lot of work experiences and, and projects that you want to leverage rather than a professional summary, it's important to look at that factor instead because a professional summary can take up a lot of space depending on your formatting. And where whereas the work experiences and projects can tell much more to a recruiter for, uh, for what skills and value you can bring to their company. So it's really, uh, if you do include a professional summary, just be intentional with what you want to convey in those two or three sentences to the recruiter. That is totally true. I couldn't agree more. I see how like any other questions. Any final thoughts, last questions? Yeah, you would love to answer all of them. Stephanie can also answer it. Someone asks, should we include retail jobs from high school? Um, if you are going to uh, apply for a, like to a position that can help you, if you think you can put why not, but it's I think uh, if it suits uh, with the position you are gonna apply to, yeah. But if it's not, if it's unprofessional job, I think you shouldn't put on your LinkedIn profile. Yeah, experience is experience, but not any experience can put on LinkedIn. You know. 
Paul asks, is it a good idea to try to stay close to recruiters who might have pursued you but did not get the job? Or should you typically move on and focus on other opportunities in the future? And I believe like um, recruiters are also like sharing uh, like many uh, opportunities on LinkedIn and you should um, keep your connections uh, with them. So, uh, you know, like, um, like every time, like people, uh, LinkedIn is a platform where you can uh, build your connections. So keep it there. I mean, yeah. Like uh, what is your take on that, Stephanie? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that something to keep in mind is that recruiters spend t almost like dozens, if not hundreds of hours looking through resumes. And if you're able to build a connection with them, even if it's a simple exchange of like, hello, or what your availability is, these are people who invested their time in you and really thought that you would make a great asset to the company. And maybe that that time you didn't get the job just wasn't the time for you. Um, but that's still a person who thought that you would be a valuable person for the role. And maybe that there's a different role for you at that same company. So I do think it's important to keep that connection, whether that's on LinkedIn, whether that's exchanging a hello via email every other month or something like that. Uh, but I, I do think it's a good idea to stay close to the recruiters because they can keep you in mind for the next role that might be a better fit for you. Yeah, I totally agree. We have a question from Tommy that says, do you use bullet points or just summarized paragraphs for the work experience descriptions? I think uh, bullet points are like most important things because you should um, take some attention from like others to uh, just point out like some of things you have done. Uh, I think you shouldn't put lots of stuff and lots of details because you know no one uh, is gonna read all of them. So keep it simple and then uh, I believe it's gonna work. Right, echoing on that, um, it's estimated that a recruiter or someone who is a hiring manager spends an average of like six seconds looking at a resume or a LinkedIn profile. And so by using bullet points, you want to make uh, short, straightforward and clear, concise um, statements on what your work experience was like and bullet points provide a clear way for them to get that information versus summarized paragraphs that just look like blobs. Mm -hmm. uh, at times. Yeah. The bullet points definitely are the way to go for conveying your work experience. Uh, the next question we have is what experience is required for freshmen in college to get internships? Uh, you can actually get um, certified on LinkedIn and then show it off on your LinkedIn profile. And you can also build some projects. Uh, it really depends on, uh, you know, a measure you are in. But uh, let's say uh, you're a, like IT guy and you can build some applications. You can uh, learn by your uh, all, like by yourself and then put some projects. Yeah, freshman. Um, you are like it means like you are quite new in like a university or college, but you can uh, build some you know projects or some stuff and then put your uh, like LinkedIn profile and you can also show how eager you are to learn to improve yourself uh, because like um, enthusiasm is really important uh, to find new opportunities, you know. Uh, the next question we have says, what items do you look for when reviewing and or looking at someone's LinkedIn profile? I think definitely their work experience. Uh, the first thing uh, recruiters uh, looks at, uh, look at is uh, definitely their work, uh, work, uh, titles, uh, what they have done, and then uh, it can be their uh, work experience details. And uh, it can be actually uh, your picture as well, because, you know, first uh, sight is also important. So if you put like a good and clear picture of yourself, uh, that would also work. You know, like a little smile always works. <laughs> <laughs> Great. 
Um, someone asked or said, sometimes recruiters in-mail me, but when I reply back, they don't respond. What could I do in this situation? Uh, please don't take it personally because they are receiving lots of tons of emails every day and they cannot uh, reply all of them. You know, it's, it's really hard to uh, get back everyone. So don't take it personally. It's not because of you. It's because of the uh, demand they uh, receive every day. Uh, so keep uh, messaging them and keep leaving uh, some comments on their sharing. Uh, they uh, they are going to realize you, notice you uh, at the end of the day. You can co leave some comments. You know, comments are really great uh, to get uh, with your profile. Leave some comments and uh, share your uh, thoughts. It's going to definitely work. Awesome. Uh, so we'll take two more questions. Someone asks, uh, what advice do you have for someone with little experience to get noticed on LinkedIn? Um, definitely. I believe um, like my professor, uh, my professor at Lampton once told me that uh, your personality will uh, lend you your next opportunity. Personality always comes first. And uh, on LinkedIn, you can show your personality uh, by leaving some comments and sharing with others because sharing is quite important, especially nowadays. Uh, like if you are, like if they see, like recruiters, like everyone see you sharing and everyone will appreciate you. And I believe that's, uh, that will definitely help you get noticed on LinkedIn. Great, and then our last question for today is from Paul. And they ask, what are some things you would consider red flags in the recruiting process? I've been told some are if they're unwilling to negotiate or refusing to disclose details about a position. Okay, I want your help, Stephanie, for this question. <laughs> what is your take on? Um, I think if, Something that might be a red flag is if there's not a external link or maybe like a, a page on LinkedIn that has internship or job uh, description. So maybe like description, uh, minimum requirements, anything like that. And then making sure that there's some brand reputation. I understand that some startups or companies are still on the way towards building their online presence. But I think generally if a recruiter or some hiring managers can't disclose any details, then that might be something to consider uh, as a red flag. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie, for your answer. Awesome. Thank you, guys, uh, for today. Uh, yes, yeah, Stephanie, go. Awesome. Thank you all so, so much for joining. And thank you, Mehmet, for leading this wonderful session. I hope you all learned a lot about LinkedIn and how to maximize your online presence. And I wish you the best in your job hunting experience. Thank, thank you so much for uh, your great in today. And thank you, for your, uh, thank you guys for you all uh, for coming to us today. Uh, I'm wishing a great day today.